Good morning to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here. It is the first day of April, April 1st, 2024. I'm in Texas, by the way, getting ready for the National Tropical Weather Conference. No fooling around here today. No jokes, no whatever, no shenanigans. Very serious. We've got to talk about severe weather, this big hurricane season that is coming up, and of course, the all-important eclipse weather. Millions of people trying to figure out what's going to happen with that. I'll shed some light on it as best I can. All right? Let's get started. We have a lot to cover. First of all, sea surface temperature anomalies. We are still progressing now. This area right here is really starting to cool off. I'll show you a tweet from Ben Nolan in just a minute. We still have the very warm tropical Atlantic in that horseshoe shape. None of this has changed in terms of differing from what we were thinking would happen. We are still on track to have a very positive and favorable setup for the upcoming hurricane season. I'll show you some info on that as we progress as well. So here's the tweet from Ben, and you can see this map that he has created saying that the Nino 1-2 index area off the west coast of South America near Peru and Ecuador, that's right here, cooling now to minus 0.8. So we're getting low. The La Nina is starting to come on board there. This is the most unusually cool value or anomalous value since January 2023, so you know about a year ago plus, and it marks an important step towards the progression back to La Nina, which will start to take shape all through here. And I can show you, the, the climate models are on top of it. They are seeing what is coming. That is October. Let's back this up to April. Here's the April can sips, the Canadian version of like a long-range climate model, simple way to put it. And you can see where we are. It's picked up the initial conditions pretty good. The very warm Atlantic in the deep tropics with a cooler North Atlantic, especially up there near Canada. So as we run this through time, June, July, August, September, a full-on La Nina developing in the Pacific with all of the warmth relative to average in the Atlantic. But this right here is really, really important. We don't have that big red blob up there, positive anomalies next to the Canadian Maritimes like we did in 2020. And I think in 2022, the depth of the heat, the focus of it, relative to average is right where we would look for it if we were looking to see what conditions create a big hurricane season. And this is it. It's like fingerprinting, matching something. That's what you look for. We can go back, we can say, hey, what gave us big seasons in the past? Seasons like 2017, 2005, and even 1933. No, 1933, we did not have satellite data, but we saw a very big season. We did have some limited ship data, but that's what we look for. What about the precipitation anomalies? Let's back this up as well. I must have been looking at this earlier and forgot to start it at the beginning. There's May, or April. There's May, by the way. This part of uh, the midsection of the country looks pretty active for precip anomalies. Green up here are positive anomalies. The yellows down to brown, etc. That's your negative anomalies for precip. So storm chasing, what have you. And, you know, crop needs, you need the moisture. Uh, the can sips at least saying we could have a wet spring in the midsection. But hurricane season-wise, here's June. Already looking pretty active here in the southwest Atlantic, Caribbean, Yes, we get into July. That continues. Now starting to work its way into the Gulf of Mexico, August, September. And I mean, look what's happening. The tropical waves, all that energy coming off. And then here's your spread of potential tracks all over the place, including working into the western part of the basin. Peak season, a very, very busy season, likely coming. We'll get a sneak preview of it from Dr. Phil Klotzbach. I saw him last week in Orlando at the National Hurricane Conference. The National Tropical Weather Conference, smaller, more focused on media, emergency managers. We learn a lot from the National Hurricane Center folks as well. But Dr. Klotzbach will issue the first quantitative forecast on Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, I do believe. And I bet you it breaks the weather Twitter Internet. It's just a saying. But it's going to be big, I'm pretty sure. All right? So we got to be getting ready. And along those lines, I want to remind you, this is important. Not just dropping bad info, like bad news. It's good info, but bad news, right? Solid intel. But it's not necessarily, you know, like, oh, this is great. This is 
concerning. So I want to make sure we are aware of what we can do about it. And our partner, Quick Dam, they can help you. We're going to talk about it more and more. We're going to get their owner on again, Carol, and the president of the company, and some testimonials from people. A very good product to help you against freshwater flooding. We're going to be talking about it more and more. Other things that you can do to help. How to inspect your roof, make sure it's good to go. Maybe you're new to an area, explaining insurance, renters, flood, how insurance works. I want to prepare you mentally as well as physically and fiscally, like the money side. Quick Dam is a good way to do that as well as other things that we're going to talk about over the next 60 days or so. Preparedness, definitely the key, and I think definitely more needed this year than probably really since 2020. We're starting to see that uh, more and more. All right, severe weather. CJ produced, he's one of our back-end friends and colleagues, this infographic, you know, from Columbia, Missouri to Tulsa, Oklahoma, you're in the enhanced risk, large hail damaging winds, the potential for some strong tornadoes as well, especially Kansas and Oklahoma. This is what it looks like for the SPC. This is today, the tornado threat greatest in this area right in here. That's the highest risk for tornadoes, it looks like. But anywhere in the area, the green, the brown, or the yellow, you just got to pay attention. We've got a lot of things distracting us these days. You've got to pay attention. There's the wind threat and then the hail threat. Oh, my goodness. Big time hail, which, by the way, we will be actively studying hail. We call it the Hail Project. Nice original name, I know. Uh, on April 10th, we start, and I'll talk more about it after the conference, after the eclipse is coming, come and gone. And uh, we are. We're going to get out of the Great Plains and start studying hail up close and personal we have a brilliant way to do it, I hope, and we're going to show you hail and its effects similar to what we have done with hurricane storm surge using cameras, close up, you know, like slow motion, high res. Oh, it's just going to be amazing. Observe and report and measure catalog. We're doing it all. We call it the hail project. And it's a day like this that we would be out there. But for you that are out there already, Please pay attention to this. This is today, Monday. This is Tuesday. The threat shifts to the Tennessee Valley and vicinity. Tornado threat is there. Be ready. The wind threat and the hail threat. Seriously, you've got to pay attention. And just, again, all the distractions in the world on social and otherwise. Our lives were busy. you got to watch the weather because I want you around. I, I like having you watch my videos. It's not an ego thing. I like the fact that I can educate you. It's a good thing, and a lot of you, I'm you know, meeting you in person, and it does matter to me. It really does, all right? So let's be ready for that. I tell you what, if the eclipse was today, except for maybe Mazatlan, even that looks doubtful, pretty much everybody in the eclipse path through here, I know that's not exact, would be completely foobarred. What a disaster that would be. Is that what we're going to see in a week? Gosh, I hope not. But it is coming we got the eclipse coming up. Tomer Berg over, you've seen him on Twitter, has created a really neat page. I'll put a link to this in the description of today's update where we can see blue basically means more favorable. Grays and darker grays, different gradations of that, not so favorable. And so eh, there's the path of totality through there. And right now I am currently slated to see the eclipse over in this area with my family, like we're going to be like 11 of us, family and friends. But we're starting to change our plans already, and we're looking at going into parts of New York instead. And here's why. Duh. You know, you got to go to where the best chances are. This total solar eclipse is a really big deal, especially to me. It is one of the most amazing things that you can see as a human being, and I want to make sure we can see it. We still have a week. Things can change, but right now the trend is not very good for Texas, and I know this is going to cause a lot of anxiety for people. But I'm going to put a link to this in the description of today's video from Tomer's site here, and I'll keep tweeting about it and talking about it. And a week from today, I guess we're going to find out. So if you're interested in the eclipse, and I know a lot of people are following it, especially the path of totality, be sure to check this out from uh, Tomer Berg. And then, and, you know, why does it show this? Let's look at the GFS from last night. We'll run it all the way out here to Monday, April the 8th. And you can see 18Z on the 8th. Wah, that's just not good. That's not, the, that's not the best look you want to see. And this is just a precip, right? This is just a very 
basic map that shows me there could be some storminess if we look at the upper levels of the atmosphere. And here's the key. Um, let me find it. Where are you? This is it. What the key is to me is the southwesterly flow through here. Uh, you know the Michael Scott meme, don't like it, don't like it. Seriously, I should drop that in. I don't want to see southwesterly flow. This isn't exactly ideal for up here either, but at least it's not southwesterly flow. I just don't want to see any vorticity, which could mean clouds or energy in the atmosphere. But that's what it looks like. That's 186 hours away. Things can and will change, but for southern plains areas, Texas, Arkansas, maybe Missouri, it's just not looking the best right now. And the same thing is showing up on the Euro. Here's its precipitation depiction. We run this out all the way to April the 8th as well. And you see there's 18Z. This is even worse. Yuck. All of this area would just be screwed in terms of the eclipse. But upstate New York, oh, that would be delightful. So plan accordingly. All right. So seriously, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to be streaming live during the Hail Project, during hurricane season. Of course, when I do these updates, if you have subscribed and put the notifications on, you'll get notified. And we appreciate that. It helps us to grow what we're doing. Share with your friends and family and colleagues. We do appreciate that. We've got a team of us. It's not just me. I might be the face. Pretty or not, doesn't matter. I do like what I... Uh, I like my job. I like doing this for you. So if you help us grow... That makes it even better. We are also supported, of course, crowdfunded through Patreon. And you can join up at patreon.com slash hurricane track or get the Patreon app. And you can actually join up for free and then pledge or invest. That's a good name for it. It's investing in our future whenever you want to. I like it that Patreon has allowed that. But that's how you do it. YouTube is where we're most prevalent and Twitter at hurricane track on Twitter, of course. And I know it's called something else, but to me it's always Twitter. All right, so that is it. In fact, there you go. We're on Patreon, Hurricane Track on Twitter, and YouTube. So to sum things up, severe weather today, tomorrow, April 1st, 2nd. Pay attention. Big hurricane season, I think, is almost inevitable. We get an update from Dr. Klotzbach on Thursday, and then we will all be watching the eclipse weather very closely, especially those of us that are traveling to the path of totality. Much luck to you. I feel your anxiety, especially if you are already planning on the southwest part of the area of totality. We'll just have to hope for the best, all right? As always, thanks for tuning in from all of us at Hurricane Track. We appreciate it. I am Mark Suttoth, of course. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again probably next Monday morning. I just don't know from where yet. Between now and then, have a great week. I'll talk to you again soon.